Welcome to the swing trading series. What we will be doing in this video as usual is performing a multi time frame technical analysis in the market. And obviously we also check what we have from an order flow perspective on the pair that we will be analyzing. Now the point of the video is show you guys first of all what kind of key concepts you have to look for when you're actually analyzing the market and searching for opportunities and number two show you what kind of opportunity we can actually be looking for on the pair that we are currently analyzing. Now if you're new to the channel I'm a top author on the TradingV platform and I share every single day a lot of free analysis and education so I really do suggest that you subscribe to the channel so you won't miss out on all this free education and I will see you in the video. It's definitely time for an update on the situation that we currently have on USD CHF as the market just followed exactly the analysis that we had published in our previous breakdown on the pair, hitting our target to the downside just now. And since the market has hit our target to the downside, we have to speak about where is the next opportunity for the pair. And this is a very good opportunity for me to speak about key levels in the market showing you guys how to identify them and what is actually the best way of identifying key levels to use them to your advantage to become a better trader. The way in which I will be structuring the analysis is as usual starting from the monthly, weekly and daily time frame speaking about the directional aspect of the market from a technical perspective. Then we will go down and see what we have from a COT perspective. So order flow to see with the commitment of traders what hedge funds are actually doing on this pair. And obviously, if you're able to read what they're doing in the market, you are able to gain you're able to gain an advantage over your competition in the market because you can follow the smart money in the market. And then we will go and see what we have from a four hour perspective, which is obviously the confirmation and entry time frame that gives us the possibility to have very high risk to reward on our trades, one to three minimum. So let's start our analysis and when I will make it down on the daily time frame, actually, we can speak about it also when we are on higher time frames, but I want to speak about it when we get down to the daily time frame. I want to speak about key levels in the market to show you guys what is the right way of identifying them and what is the wrong way of identifying key levels. So let's start first, first from the analysis and then when we will get to the daily time frame, we will obviously is see what we have from a key level perspective. So let's start from the monthly. On the monthly, we can clearly see that the market has provided a very strong impulse to the downside. From here, the market has created this very strong impulse. Now, after an impulse, what do you want to see? You want to see the market give you a correction. Specifically, you would like to see the market retrace at least to the 0.382 of the Fibonacci taken on the impulse. So when you have an impulse, this is a general rule and you want informations on the retracement, always take your Fibonacci from the high to the low of the impulse and you want to see the market retrace at least to this 0.382 Fibonacci retracement, which is the first strong resistance level which the market will encounter in its move to the upside. Now, taking our Fibonacci from the high to the low of the impulse, we can see that our 0.382 hasn't been hit yet. We still have the possibility to create a move to the upside to go and really test this 0.382 as the market missed it by few pips. So we have still the possibility to create another move to the upside and a deeper retracement. Going down on the weekly, what do we see? Now, from a weekly perspective, we see a very important thing. We see that the market has created a strong impulse to the downside and then inside of this area created an inverted head and shoulders. Now, if you're not seeing the inverted head and shoulders here, there's a quick trick that you can use that will definitely help you. You can go down on a line chart. And if you go down on a line chart, you can see that we have a left shoulder here, a head here and a right shoulder here. And now that you go back to the candles, you will clearly see the pattern already with a left shoulder here head here and right shoulder here. And the market started a huge move to the upside, which is exactly what you expect after a market is overextended to the downside and in need of a retracement. And it also has an inverted head and shoulders. You definitely expect a strong rejection to the upside. Going down on the daily, what did we have? 
Now, when the market had created this move to the upside, I made a full breakdown of USDCHF and I explained to you guys all the reasons for which from here we wanted to see this move to the downside. And that is exactly what the market just created. The market gave us the move to the downside exactly as we wanted to see. And I will link in the description the previous analysis in which I explained all the reasons for which from here we wanted to see this move to the downside. I will link this in the description so you can go and check it out for further reference and more free education. And if you capitalized on this move to the downside following the analysis, then great job. But where is the next opportunity for USD CHF? Just a quick reminder, make sure you comment below and you let me know which pair or topic you would like me to cover or analyze in the next video. This is where key levels come into place here in this video. Before we go and see what we have from a COT perspective, I want to digress a little bit speaking about key levels. Now, in this case, okay, what is a key level? Now, a key level is uh, an area in the market in which you expect the market to show a rejection when it will actually approach that area. Now, in this case, all this zone here is a very strong key level for this pair. And also this area here is a key level for this pair. Now, if you're asking yourself, why are this area's key levels for this pair? Because clearly there are levels of previous resistance, which are not on support and also previous resistance here, which are not on support. Now, you may be asking yourself, OK, but why are you not zooming out on the chart and identifying the levels that have been respected the most in the past? Because this is something that many, many people make mistakes with. If you go and zoom out, OK? and you start identifying levels at which the market had clearly shown a rejection in the past. For example, all this area here, you have support here, support here, support here. This is definitely important level in the market. Then what happened? The market just completely stopped uh, respecting, for example, this level. Now, what many people will do, they will start taking all these huge horizontal levels and their chart will be will be very, very messy. It's not difficult to find these important zones in the market. OK, however, it's absolutely not relevant. Why is absolutely not relevant? It will only cloud your judgment. Having a chart with all these lines will only cloud your judgment. You will think that when the market hits this area, you need to be looking for an opportunity, while many, many times the market will just uh, melt and break these areas is not relevant. What is relevant is the most recent structure. For example, look at when these key levels that I just quickly identified were actually respected in the market. They were not respected when we just had the key level. They were respected when we had previous support turn resistance or previous resistance turn support. For example, here, why it was respected? Because we had previous support now turn resistance, the market respected it and melted to the downside. Here, we had previous support, turn resistance, the market respected it and created a move to the downside. Here, why it was respected? Because we were at the previous high area. For example, I don't know, here, why it was respected? Because we had previous support, now turn resistance. So this is basically to tell you guys, you don't have to identify all these levels on the chart. What you have to identify is the most recent structure. That is what is actually relevant. Because anyway, if there is a key level at, at an area and that key level is actually important, what you will see is that the market has already and is, as you're analyzing the market, is respecting the area. So if there is a key level at that area, you will see that reflected in the most recent price action. If there is a key level at this area here, you will see it reflected in the most recent price action. And in fact, in this case, we see it. We have previous resistance, 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 which is not on support here. And we also have the completion zone of the overextended W formation, which is here. So if you look at the most recent price action from a daily, weekly and monthly perspective, you will have strong key levels and this will immediately filter out if they are key levels that you're actually supposed to be looking for or not. Because if key levels are not, if a key level is not relevant anymore, the market in the most recent price action will not respect that key level. Therefore, you will not have the structure for that, for that key level and you have automatically filter out key levels that are not relevant anymore. Anyway, let's get back to our analysis. 
Now, after an overextended W formation in general, you want to see the market create a correction. Specifically, you would like to see the market first hit the first uh, target zone, which is this one here, which is the previous resistance, not our support. And in general, you will actually like to see the market reach the neckline of the formation, which is the exact previous resistance, not our support, because it's the last time that the market went to the downside before creating all this move to the upside. Now, in this case, the last time that the market went to the downside before creating this move to the upside is exactly here. So there is definitely a possibility to see the market go and hit this support and then get rejected to the upside and start the real move to the upside. Anyway, let's go and see what we have from a COT perspective on the CHF to see what kind of opportunity we can actually be looking for on USD CHF. Now, if we check the data for the CHF, what do we see? We see that with the last report, hedge funds opened 600 shorts and closed 2.5k longs. Now, in order for you to understand what this means, you have to know a thing. If you check the data for the CHF, you are not checking CHF because all currencies on the spot are traded against the USD. So if you check the data for the CHF, you are actually checking CHF USD. So if you want information on USD CHF, you actually have to reverse everything that you read here. So if you read that they added 500, if you if you read that they added 600 shorts, it means that they close 600 shorts. And if you see that they close 2.5k longs, it means that they actually opened 2.5k longs. So here on the CHF, what we see is during this retracement, what hedge funds did is they added 2.5k longs and closed 600 shorts. So they are buying USD CHF, which is good for our for a long um, opportunity. Now, what we could see with the previous report is exactly what we expected. We had 800 shorts getting added and 3K longs getting closed, meaning that when the market was here, what hedge funds were doing, they were adding a lot of shorts and closing a lot of longs for a nice move to the downside, which is exactly what the market created. And now when the market is here, they're actually doing the opposite. So adding longs and closing shorts. And obviously, if you look at the net positions, they are decreasing the short exposure is increasing a long exposure is decreasing obviously reverse everything and it means that from here we can expect a move to the upside specifically it would be great to first see a completion at this area and then a fake breakout back to the upside creating also this inverted head and shoulders before the continuation to the upside now how we will be approaching this kind of situation with students now as usual trading is reactive it is not predictive and the monthly weekly and daily time frames are the best time frames when it comes to the direction of the market but the best time frame for confirmations and entry is the four hours so what we will be doing with students now with students we will be monitoring price action inside of this area from a four hour perspective until everything will remain bearish, we will obviously not be looking for any opportunity. And also until the market from a daily closing perspective will remain below this zone, we will not be looking for the opportunity. But when the market will break back above the area, if obviously it will break back above the area, at that point after the market will break back above the structure, possibly after testing this neckline, only at that point we will be interested in USD CHF. And as soon as the market will do that, what we will be doing is monitoring price action from a four hour perspective with students waiting for the market to shift from a bearish market to a bullish market. And as soon as the market will shift from a bearish to a bullish market, we will be taking a nice long with a very good risk to reward and very good probabilities for the move to the upside and completion of this impulse correction and impulse pattern to the upside. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that like button and comment below. It really does support the creation of more free education and analysis for all of you. Also, make sure you go and check out the mentorship program. You find the link in the description. You first learn all the rules of my rule-based strategies in the program, and then you trade them live with me. Each and every day, you get a new daily market breakdown showing you exactly how to apply the strategies with entry, stops, and take profits, as well as having me answering personally every question that you have every single day. So I really suggest you go and check out the program. The link is in the description and I will see you in.